BGMC. The biblical truth lives here. Welcome to the City Gate Messianic Bible Study, being brought to you by Beth Going Messianic Congregation. What is the importance of the biblical city gate? It was a place contracts were made that are binding forever. The city gate was also a place of redemption for the kinsman redeemer. The city gate was a place where chastisement was administered. So come join us now as we enter into the city gate messianic Bible study. Let's go get a blessing. Turn to the book of Jeremiah, Yirmiyahu, chapter 4. That's Jeremiah chapter 4. This is the City Gate Messianic Bible Study being brought to you by Beth Goyim. Once again, I invite you out to our congregation. You don't have to be Jewish to come worship with us. You just got to be seeking the truth. So you can be black or white, Jew or Gentile, tall or short, rich or poor, it doesn't matter. Jehovah the Father wants us to be worshiping as one people together. This is part number 17 of our study. And if you've missed any, any part of our study, you can go to our website, bgmctv.org. That's bgmctv.org. Uh, we are once again back on uh, YouTube. Uh, once again, they, they don't like the truth very much, so always mark our page. Uh, that is uh, yeshuatube.org or rumble.com forward slash bgmctv. That's rumble.com forward slash bgmctv. Okay, always keep that marked because we tell the truth here and uh, sometimes the people at YouTube don't like to hear the truth, so... We had uh, uh, we we streamed last week on our YouTube on our Rumble side, and uh, that uh, service has been watched 898 times. And that's uh, just on Rumble alone. That's 898 times. So let's uh, let's look at um, we're going to be looking at part number five of chapter four. Uh, chapter four was broken down into five sections let me just fix this camera here a little bit okay and uh, we're now into section number five which is verse 27 through 31 so let's read let's read this section because it's uh it's an amazing section of chapter four because what we see here uh, once we're once we're done reading it, you'll see, uh, I think, a, a great uh, a great but sad parallel to what's going on here in America right now. So let's read verse uh, Jeremiah, Yemiyahu, chapter 4, verse 27 through 31. For here's what Jehovah says, the whole land will be desolate although I will not destroy it completely. Because of this, the land will mourn and the sky above will be black. For I have spoken, I have decided, I will not change my mind, I will not turn back. At the noise of the horsemen and archers, the entire city flees. Some plunge into thickets, Others climb rocks. All cities are deserted. No one lives there. And you who are doomed to be plundered will do uh, to do to be plundered. What do you mean by putting on crimson, decking yourselves with jewels and gold, enlarging your eyes with eye makeup? You beautify yourself in vain. Your lovers despise you. 
they seek your life. For I have heard the sound, heard a sound like a woman in labor, in anguish, giving birth to her first child. It is the sound of the daughter of Zion gasping for breath as she spreads her hands. Woe to me, everything in me is so weary before the killers. Okay, uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to look at this section because it's, uh, I think it's a, a really important section of, uh, of, of the whole book of Jeremiah. Okay, because it really shows something in verse 30 that is very important to our study of the Word. But when we get to it, it really does parallel uh, what is going on here in America today. So let's move on uh, to th that section, verse 27 through 29. And once again, if you'd like the PowerPoint, you can just send me an email at info at bethglam.org or rabbiandrew at bethglam.org. And uh, just say you want the PowerPoint. It's now up to over 250 slides, for, and we're only up to uh, chapter 4 of uh, of this study and um, it's free of charge but if you would donate something that would be great because this does take a lot of time and you should uh, help out the ministry if at all possible but if you don't have any money it'll still be free so verse 27 through 29 for here's what Jehovah says the whole land will be desolate although I will not destroy it completely because of this, the land will mourn, and the sky above be black. For I have spoken, I have decided that I will not change my mind, I will not turn back at the noise of the horsemen, archers, the entire city flees. Some plunge into thickets, others climb uh, rocks, all cities are deserted. No one is there. So uh, this section 5 is actually broken up into part A and part B in section 5, which is section 5 is verse 27 through 31. So it's really broken into this beginning part and then the next part uh, about uh, what they're dressed like and what that means. Okay, so in part one of section five we have the promise of chastisement okay so you know it's very clear there it was saying i'm gonna uh the whole land will be desolate you know he's not gonna wipe out everybody but he's gonna surely uh destroy a bunch of people okay and then uh when we get to the the second half of section five uh verse uh, 30, you'll see something which I entitled the Samson Syndrome. You know, Samson uh, was, was an interesting character in our Bible, real man. Uh, but there's, a, there's a, a key part after he allows, allows his hair to be cut. He didn't know the Spirit of God left him. And that's the Samson syndrome that uh, I think America is going to go through. Uh, the Samson syndrome is he went to fight the Philistines and he lost his strength because he allowed uh, his hair to be cut and he was never supposed to allow his hair to ever be cut. So he tried to fight the Philistines and was unable because uh, the Spirit of God had left him. So... When we get to the second half of section five, we're going to go over what I entitled the Samson's, the Samson syndrome or the Shimshon syndrome, okay, and it's it's extraordinarily sad 
when that happens, but we'll talk about it once we get there. Okay. Uh, what we see in, let's read verse 27 to 29 again. Uh, for here's what Jehovah says, the whole land will be desolate, although I will not destroy it completely. Because of this, the land will mourn, and the sky above be black. For I have spoken, I have decided I will not change my mind. I will not turn back at the noise of the horsemen and archers. The entire city flees. Some plunge into thickets, others climb rocks. All cities are deserted. No one lives there. Okay, so we see something that we've seen throughout this study. Uh, the chastisement. But we look here in verse 29. Into, they plunge, some plunge into the thickets. That means they're, they're running scared. And thickets are sticker, sticker bushes. And you're, you're going to get extraordinarily cut up. So that's something for us to look at. That uh, when this horde, this army comes to invade the land, uh, these people, some get so scared, they run into sticker bushes. And to... And to, to try to get away. And that's when you're not thinking at all. Okay, so let's move on to the next part here. Uh, 27 to 29 again. For here's what Jehovah says. The whole land will be desolate, although I will not destroy it completely. Because of this, the land will mourn and the sky above be black. For I have spoken... I have decided I will not change my mind. I will not turn back. At the noise of the horsemen and archers, the entire city flees. Some plunge into thickets, others into rocks. All cities are deserted. No one lives there. Okay, so we have this poetic picture. Uh, poetic meaning it's described well. Okay. And it shows, once again, some people will flee. But when you're fleeing, you're not fleeing with your suitcases, okay? You have not packed. Your, if your country is being invaded and your monetary system will collapse, so you're not going to have money, so you're fleeing... And you're not going to have food, water, or shelter. Okay? You're just trying to get a way to live and, you know, pray to... Yeshua says in Matthew 24, pray that it doesn't happen in winter. Okay? Because it would be bad and, you know, you die quicker, which in some senses might not be bad, but then you will meet the, the Father in Heaven and, and are you ready to meet Him? Okay? So this, this poetic picture of destruction... Uh, Meaning that people people are going to flee uh, the cities of Yehuda when the when the enemy comes, the land will eventually be completely desolate. Okay, Jehovah is going to leave you know just some people there, but it's going to look like it's desolate because you know it's a big city and not many people are going to be there. And the the real key to what what we're learning here is, and we've seen it in the, the past week's studies, Jehovah was just asking for us to repent and return to him. And he said on a number of occasions that he would, he would forgive. He would forgive. And now we see in verse 29, you know, that the, the horsemen and the archers are coming and now people are, are trying to run away and run, climb up rocks and, you know, run through these bushes that are going to cut them all up. And you're not going to survive. And this is what Jehovah didn't want to happen, but... He is righteous. The Father is righteous. And the people were not listening to the warning. 
And that's, that's extraordinarily sad that we don't listen to the warning. And that's, uh, it's happening, you know, again in Israel, uh, which is sad again. And it's also happening here in America, you know, we'll get to that in a minute, okay? I keep going to the, I want you to, to keep that in the back of your mind because we're, we're going to look at that verse and we're going to really see a parallel. And I think uh, things are going to happen shortly. Okay, let's uh, look at verse 27 through 29 again. For here is what Jehovah says, the whole land will be desolate, although I will not destroy it completely. Because of this, the land will mourn, and the sky above be black. For I have decided I will not change my mind, I will not turn back at the noise of the horsemen and, the, and archers, the entire city flees. Some plunge into thickets, others climb rocks. All cities are deserted. No one lives there. Okay, so in 29, we're something a lot of people don't think about. And it's put it this way. We're going to be looking at, at, the, at the noise. Okay, when you watch a scary movie, and, you know, a long time ago the movie Jaws, you hear, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. okay, now picture yourself living in a time of war, and you're hearing the, the soldiers get closer, you're hearing the planes coming, you know, the, nowadays the, the jet aircraft coming. Uh, you're hearing the noise of the missiles fired before they hit. The, the <whistles> so look at verse 29. At the noise of the horsemen and archers, the entire city flees. Some plunge into thickets. Others climb rocks. All cities are deserted. No one lives there. Okay. So this noise of all these horses coming would rattle the ground. The horses, uh, you know, would they, they're not quiet when they're running. Okay, so this noise getting closer and closer to you is going to scare most people. And verse 29, Jehovah is telling us, you know, when you're hearing all these horses and these archers, I mean, that's men walking, men marching. This is going to be an incredible sound. It's going to, you know, you're going to hear this, this rumble. You're going to feel the vibrations. You know, and it's going to be getting louder and louder and louder as it gets closer, closer, and closer. And... For most people, that, that sound is going to really, you know, scare you. Okay. Now, in light of what we're reading, that sound, when Jehovah's saying, when you hear it, you're going you're gonna to know it's real. And most people don't know how to fight. Most people have never fired a gun. Most people are scared to die. So this sound is coming closer and you're going to have to deal with it because there's no escape. So we see in verse 29, look at verse 29 again. At the noise of the horsemen and archers, the entire city flees. Okay, now they know it's real. You know, before they're like, oh, the, you know, the prophets are saying, the other, the other prophets are saying, nothing's going to happen. But Jeremiah was saying, you know, God's telling him, bad things are going to happen. Okay, so 
that's when they flee. And that's when it becomes real. And they're, you know, look at verse 29. At the noise of the horsemen and the archers, the entire city flees. Some plunge into thickets. Others climb rocks. All cities are deserted. No one lives there. Okay, so some plunge into thickets. They're so afraid, they're not thinking. They're, they're just going to go right into the thicket. They're going to go right into the thicket. Okay, so that's something that we have to think of here in part number 17. It's something that we, we really need to think about as things happen in the world. You know, let's look at verse 27 to 29 again. For here's what Jehovah says, The whole land will be desolate, although I will not destroy it completely. Because of this, the land will mourn, and the sky above be black. For I have spoken, I have decided, I will not change my mind. I will not turn back. At that time, at the noise of the horsemen and archers, the entire city flees. Some plunge into thickets, others into rocks, others climb rocks. All cities are deserted no one lives there okay so verse 27 Jehovah you know shows us you know I've waited long enough now the whole land is going to be desolate he's he's tired of people not listening okay and now the land is going to mourn because the land was made to produce food and now it's not going to be produced food now, we see in verse 28, it says the sky above is black. Okay, why would it be black? Okay, maybe there's fires. Okay, because they're setting fires to all the cities. And, uh, you know, the, the, it says the, the whole land will be desolate. Okay, so desolation requires wiping out everything. So the sky will be black because it's going to be like fire like we've seen in the news lately. In that fire, in that place. Okay. So it's something for all of us to to really look at. Okay. And uh, people will run, they won't think, they'll run right into the, the sticker bushes. Excuse me. They'll run right into the sticker bushes. And... All, you know, what's really sad is all cities are deserted. No one lives there. That's something that you need to look at. A total, a complete devastation. Okay, a complete devastation. That's what he's doing. Okay. And, you know, the archers are coming. The horses are coming. It's rattling the land. It's shaking the land. And, and you're, in, you're in there and you're like, what's that noise? Why is it the earth shaking? And then, you know, the, the arrows are coming in. The bow, you know, the archers are there. Okay. And then people are fleeing. They're running every which way. And you're not, you know, who's carrying your luggage? Nobody's carrying your luggage. You're just fleeing for your life. You know, the food that you've stored is left behind. You know, everything is left behind. All your, 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 pre your precious, your pictures, your, all your stuff that you had. And it was because you didn't listen. And you always said, I'll leave a few there, but uh, most of you are going to die. I've been being taken captive. Hey, so, so now let's look at verse... 30 and 31. This is section 5, okay, of chapter 4. This is Yirmiyahu, chapter 4. Section number 5, this is a uh, third study on chapter 4. And you who are doomed to be plundered, what do you mean by putting on crimson, decking yourselves with jewels, 
and gold, enlarging your eyes with eye makeup. You beautify yourself in vain. Your lovers despise you. They seek your life. For I have heard the sound like a woman in labor, in anguish giving birth to her first child. It is the sound of the daughter of Zion gasping for breath as she spreads her hands. Woe to me. Everything in me is so weary before the killers. Okay, so we're looking at this this really important section now. This parallel that we need to look at as it was in the past, it'll be once again. It's something Excuse me one second. Okay, sorry about that. But this is a thorn in my side. All right, so look at verse 30. And you who are doomed to be plundered, what do you mean by putting on crimson, decking yourselves with jewels, and enlarging your eyes with eye makeup? You beautify yourself in vain. Your lovers despise you. They seek your life. Okay, so what's going on here is something important because Israel still thinks they could do that today you know we can smooth talk them we can you know we got a lot of money we can pay them off okay we could dress you know like we're royalty and crimson and scarlet but at the end of the the verse Jehovah says uh, your lovers despise you they seek your life and this parallels to what you know America is trying to do. America, you know, most of the countries around the world know that America is gone. Okay, we're a shell of ourselves. Our military is no good uh, because they've gutted it with the from anybody who had a brain. Our leadership is terrible. Our money is no good anymore because it's sinking. Because when you you don't hold on to God, as you know, we're seeing here in Jeremiah, and He doesn't bless you. Okay. Then what Israel was trying to do here is, you know, well, we'll put on our our best clothes. We'll we'll have our jewelry. We'll try to we'll make ourselves look beautiful, and. He says your your lovers despise you. They want to have nothing to do with Israel here in verse 30. And you think you can fool people. You know, oh, look, they still have money. They still have an address. There comes a point where you're not going to be able to fool people. They're not going to stand with you any longer. And this is what's happening in verse 30, which is happening to Israel today and to America today. Nobody's going to want what you have. You're going to be like you have the plague. No matter how you, you dress, well, we have this fine clothing. Okay, well, it doesn't matter anymore because nobody wants what you have anymore. And that's what Jehovah is telling us in verse 30. Nobody's going to want what you're offering. And that's something very much for you to look at here in this study. Okay, and once again, like I said, if you've missed any part of the study, you can go to BethCoyim.org or BGMCTV.org and check out the other parts of our study. Nobody's going to want what, what you're offering. Okay? And it's something for us to really look at. Okay? Uh, 
Let's read this again. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, speak up. Okay. Verse 30. And you who are doomed to be plundered, what do you mean by putting on crimson, decking yourselves with jewels and gold, enlarging your eyes with eye makeup? You beautify yourself in vain. Your lovers despise you. They seek your life. Okay, so in the past, they would, you know, spiritually fornicate with you or fornicate with you. And now they want to have nothing to do with you. But you're still thinking you have power. And that's what happens to many countries. You know, one of the things that made America great was everybody you know, was in the pursuit of happiness, capitalism, what is a good thing, you know, people owning their own businesses, doing their best to run, run their own companies and all this stuff. That's what made America good, okay? And that's what made her prosperous because people also feared God, okay? Israel, you know, stopped fearing God. And that's what he says in the beginning of verse 30. And you who are doomed, okay? He's telling them they're doomed, but they don't want to listen. They, they don't want to. They don't want to look at what's happening. So they they still put on their what they think is their royal garments, the crimson or scarlet. And you, they're putting on their jewelry, they're putting on their makeup, thinking that there's there's still somebody. And they're not. They're not anybody anymore. And he's saying that they, you know, this is a powerful verse. You beautify yourselves in vain, your lovers despise you. They seek to kill you. And that's something that you could even bring down to a personal level. You know, there in the world, you know, people, you know, some people that are, you know, have good looks and they use that to their advantage when they're young and then they, when they get older they try to use that sexuality and it doesn't work any longer because you're not young any longer you don't have the same looks that people want any longer so in the, in the end of verse 30, it says, You beautify yourself in vain. Your lovers despise you. So Jehovah's saying this, I made you beautiful, but now because you've left me, you're no longer beautiful. Okay? So, what's sad about verse 30 is they, they have that Samson Syndrome, the Samson syndrome that I was talking about earlier. They have the Samson syndrome where Samson was fighting the Philistines and he allowed his hair to get cut and the Spirit of God left him and he didn't know it. So Israel had the Samson syndrome. They beautified themselves but their lovers didn't want them. They didn't want what you were given any longer because they, they didn't need you. They didn't want you. And you, you know, God made you ugly in their eyes. So now they're dealing with this situation coming. Okay? They're dealing with that situation coming. Okay, let's look at verse 30 and 31 again. And you who are doomed to be plundered, what do you mean by putting on crimson, decking yourselves with jewels and gold, enlarging your eyes with eye makeup? You beautify yourselves in vain, your lovers despise you. They seek your life, for I have heard the sound like a woman in labor, in anguish, giving birth to her first child. It is the sound of the daughter of Zion ga gasping for breath as she spreads out her hands. Woe to me, everything in me is so weary before the killers. Okay, so she's realizing, Israel is realizing that these killers are coming. Okay, so 
they're trying to win back their lovers, but it's not going to happen. Okay? It's not going to happen. So now, in verse 31, Israel is in anguish. She's in pain. Like a, a woman who's giving birth for her first time. Okay? Any of the women that I've known that you know, have given birth to multiple children, the first one is the hardest because they, they can only guess what to expect. Okay? You know, they, they've been told, okay, it's going to be painful. Okay? These things are going to go on. But it isn't until you experience giving birth to a child for, you know, and no man's going to get birth because their body's not designed like that. No matter what you do, you, your, your body's not going to, you know, one of the, the reason a woman is in pain is her, her cervix is, is separating to allow the child through the birth canal. And that's never going to happen to a man. Okay, somebody that's been born a man, your your cervix is not going to spread. So Israel here in verse 31, you know, she's like a woman in labor for her very first time. She's experiencing this, this incredible transition of giving birth. And it'll it'll end good once the child has come out of the womb. And then all the pain will be forgotten because there's this joy that comes when the, a new life has come outside the womb. So Israel, look at verse 31. For I have heard the sound of, like a woman in labor, in anguish giving birth to her first child. It is the sound of the daughter of Zion gasping for breath as she spreads, out, spreads her hands. Woe to me, everything in in me is so weary before the, the killer. The, the pain is getting more intense. The pain is uh, growing stronger. There's no rest in between the contractions. And it wears somebody out. So now in verse 31, the, the Lord is saying, this is like your first child. So it isn't like this is your third child where you know how what's coming, what to expect. Your cervix moves from more rapidly to separate to allow the child through the birth canal so this is our first child and you know the lord is saying this is going to be painful okay any questions or comments okay verse 31 again for i have have heard the sound of, of like a woman in labor in anguish giving birth to her first child. It is the sound of the daughter of Zion gasping for breath as she spreads her hands. Woe to me, everything in me is so weary before the killers. Okay, now in verse 31, it says she's spreading her hands. Who is she spreading her hands to? She's spreading her hands out to Jehovah. Oh, now you want him. Now, since the killers are on your doorstep. Now, since, you know, you didn't want Jehovah before. And now you want him because now you're afraid. Now your makeup's not working. Now your jewels are not working. Now your crimson clothing is not working. Now your lover doesn't want you anymore. Now you're spreading out your hands to God. He's not going to answer now. You're going through this because you wouldn't answer him beforehand because you were all into your 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 lovers. You were all into your money. You were all into your things that made made you rich and now you're in pain and now you're suffering. You're 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 running into the the sticker bushes. You're climbing rocks. You're trying to get away and he he asked us a number of times to come back to listen to his commandments. He would forgive if we would repent. When, and I've said this through this study, and I 
say a lot at the congregation. When a child is being chastised, that's when they're repentant. You know, when they're getting spanked, that's when they're repenting. That's, no, that's not the time to repent. The time to repent was before the chastisement began. So Jehovah's telling us, this is going to be like your first child. You're going to, you're going to think this pain is horrible because you don't know what to expect. And you tried to get you know your lovers to love you, but they didn't want what you had anymore. So now you're going to have to go through it. And this is so sad because Israel today is doing the same things that she did in the time of Yirmiyahu, in the time of Jeremiah. And the same things are going to happen again. The same thing happened in 70. The same thing happened in World War II with Hitler. The same thing has happened throughout history to the, the Hebrew people. And it's going to happen here in America to America. And when you know we're being taken over, oh, we'll repent now, we'll repent now. It's not going to work. All right, any questions or comments before we move on to... Chapter number five. Okay, we're going to be moving on to chapter number five. So, turning your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter five. Jeremiah chapter five. Okay, uh, Jeremiah 5. Jeremiah 5, uh, why don't we read it first and then we'll do the chapter breakdown. Let's, let's read these 31 verses. We're going to read Jeremiah chapter 5. Okay, then we'll do the chapter breakdown. Roam the streets of Jerusalem, look around. Observe and ask in its open spaces if you can find anyone if there if there is anyone who acts with justice and seeks the truth i will pardon her and though they say as jehovah lives the fact is that they are swearing falsely jehovah your eyes look for truth you struck them but they weren't affected you nearly destroyed them but they refused correction. They made their faces harder than rock, refusing to repent. My reaction was, these must be the poor, the foolish, not knowing the way of Jehovah or the rulings of their Elohim. I will go to the prominent men and, then will, and I, I will speak to them, for they know the way of Jehovah and the rulings of their Elohim. But these had completely broken the yoke and torn the harness off. This is why the forest lion kills them, why a desert wolf can plunder them, why a leopard guards a city, their cities, all who leave are torn to pieces, because their crimes are many, their backsliding keep increasing. Why should I forgive you? Your people have abandoned me and sworn by non-gods. When I fed them to the full, they committed adultery, thronging to the brothels. They have become like well-fed horses, lusty stallions, each one neighing after his neighbor's wife. Should I not punish for this? asked Jehovah. Should I not be avenged on a nation like this? Go through her roads the vines and destroy them but they don't destroy them completely strip away their branches they do not belong to Jehovah for the house of Yisrael and the house of Yehuda have thoroughly betrayed me says Jehovah they have denied Jehovah they have said we won't do anything calamity will not strike us we will see neither sword or famine the prophets are merely wind 
They do not have the word. The things that they are predicting will happen only to them. Therefore, Jehovah Elohei Sivot says, Because you people speak this way, I will make my words fire in your mouth, Yerushalayim. Uh, Yermiyahu. And the people, the people would, so that it will devour them. I will bring on you, house of Israel, a distant nation, says Jehovah, an enduring nation, an ancient nation, a nation whose language you do not know. You will not understand what they are saying. Their quiver is like an open grave. They are all mighty warriors. They will eat up your harvest and your bread. They will eat up your sons and daughters. They will eat up your flocks and your herds. They will eat up your vines and your fig trees. And the sword they will beat down your fortified cities in which you trust. But even those days, says Jehovah, I will not completely destroy you. And when, you, when your people ask, Why has Jehovah your Elohim done all these things to us? You are to give them this answer. Just as you abandoned me and served strange gods in your own land, so likewise you will serve strangers in a land that is not your own. Announce this to the house of Yaakov, proclaim it in Yehuda. Say, hear this stupid, brainless people who have eyes but do not see, who have ears but do not hear. Don't you fear me, says Jehovah? Won't you tremble at my presence? I made the shore the limit for the sea. By the eternal degree it cannot pass. Its waves may toss, but to no avail, although they roar, they cannot cross it. But this people it has a rebellious, defiant heart. They have rebelled and gone. They don't say to themselves, Let's fear Yehovah Elohim, who gives fall and spring rains and seasons, who reserve, reserve us the week, weeks assigned for harvest. Your crimes have over turn nature's rules. Your sins have kept back good from you. For among my people there are wicked men who like fowlers lie in wait and set traps to catch their fellow human beings. Their houses are as full as fraud as a cage full of birds. They grow rich and great, sleek and bloated. They excel in acts of wickedness, but do not plead on behalf of the orphan thus enabling his cause to succeed, nor do they judge in favor of the poor. Should I not punish for this? asked Jehovah. Should I not be avenged on a nation like this? A shocking, horrifying thing has happened in the land. The prophets prophesy lies. The Kohenim obey the prophets, and my people love it that way. But what will you do at the end of it all. Okay, that's a powerful passage that we read. Now, what we're looking at here is as I do in, in each of the, uh, the chapters that we, we looked at, I gave you a chapter breakdown. What I find when we're studying the Word of God in, in an in-depth study like we're doing here, it is good to have a breakdown of, <clears throat> of sections of the chapter you're reading because it helps you to study better. It helps you to um, understand how things get put together. And when you have titles for the section, it also helps you give you an overview of what those verses are. And I find this to be much better. So, Section number one is verse one through six. The fact is, is that they are swearing falsely. Okay, this this uh, this is a pattern for actually for each chapter. This swearing falsely and not understanding what God wants. Section number two is verse seven through thirteen. When I fed them to the full, they committed adultery to their brothels. Okay. So Jehovah's saying in that section there, he's given them all these blessings, and they, instead of blessing the Lord and being close with him, 
They went and fornicated. They went and prostituted themselves. They went to the brothels. And it isn't always a sexual brothel. It could be a uh, anything that draws you away from God. Verse 14 through 17 is section number 3. You, speak, you people speak this way. I will make my words fire in your mouth. So Jeremiah is going to uh, give fire from his mouth. Okay, so he's going to be speaking the truth, and the people are not going to want to listen. Section number four is verse 18 through 23. Just as you abandon me and serve strange gods. That's a pattern with any nation that has been prosperous. They abandon Jehovah. You know, when people are poor, they're praying for the rent, they're praying for food, they're praying for a job, they're, they're praying to move up from, from below. But when they get blessed, they abandon the Lord. And this is a pattern with Israel uh, throughout history. And it's a sad pattern. And then finally, chapter number 5, the fifth section is verse 24 through 31. Your crimes have overturned nature, nature's rules. In nature's rules, or the, you know, we have the spring, the spring and the fall rains. In the rainy season and stuff like that. Because of what Israel did... Excuse me one second, let me just get a drink. Jehovah had to break nature's rules and cause famine and all sorts of different stuff like that. Okay. Now also what I've been doing for each of the, the chapters is giving you the contents of what the chapter is about. Uh, who are the main characters in the in the chapter and then a conclusion for the chapter so for your notes you can have a, a well organized uh, notebook so the content uh, this is uh, what they call Yirmiyahu's second message okay he got the initial message to give to them and then uh, uh, he Jeremiah Yirmiyahu brings Jehovah's charges against the people of the land. And if, remember, we always say, Yeshua is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jehovah is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he did this in the past to Israel, and it's, uh, it's in a book for us to read, this is for everybody to see, because all the nations are his, all the people, everybody is his, you just have to decide who you're going to worship. So you should see the same pattern. And our conclusion, sinners have reason to expect punishment. Okay? But most people don't think that they're, they're acting that bad. But, and they, they don't expect punishment. But you should expect punishment. Okay? Because Jehovah is holy. And you, you must realize that he is holy, and sin is offensive to him, especially since he wrote it down, and he sent his son to give us an example. And you think all you got to do is claim the name of Jesus and be forgiven, but still keep doing the same stuff? Well, you might want to look at the past and see Jehovah's, uh, his character, the Father's character. Because he doesn't change. He's always going to be holy. He, he hates sin. Okay. There are things that he you know, he says he hates. In Proverbs it says there are things that he hates. So sin is highly offensive to Jehovah. And sin will not go unpunished. Adam and Chava, Adam and Eve, had one, one rule. And it was a kosher law to follow in the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Den. And because they didn't follow the one rule, they had to be punished. And they got kicked out of the garden. So if that was for them, and we have the whole written Torah, and it's in our heart and it's on paper, why should we not go unpunished? So we're going to be looking at chapter 5 to show that Jehovah does punish. 
but it, there are some people that are going to survive. He said he would leave a remnant. Those are the ones that were following the commandments. Okay, and uh, if he doesn't, if he doesn't punish these people in the book of Jeremiah, he would have to apologize to the people during the flood. And he's not going to apologize to you know everybody except for Noah's family that drowned in the flood. He's not going to apologize to all them because they were sinful. So if he did that to them, then why would he allow any of us who is not repenting and turning, especially during this sixth month of a, of a lul, it's a time of coming close to the king in these days of awe, the, these, the, these 40 days. We're supposed to be getting closer to the king. All right, any questions or comments before we begin section number one of chapter five? Okay. Chapter five, verse one through six, that's the first section. It says, let me just make sure this is okay over here. Okay. Roam the streets of Jerusalem. Look around, observe and ask in its open spaces. If you can find any anyone, if there is anyone, who acts with justice and seeks the truth, I will pardon her. And though they say, as Jehovah lives, the fact is they are swearing falsely. Jehovah, your eyes look for truth. You struck them, but they weren't affected. You nearly destroyed them, but they refused correction. They made their faces harder than rock, refusing to repent. My reaction was, these must be the poor, the foolish, not knowing the way of Jehovah or, or the rulings of their God. I will go to the prominent men. And I will speak to them, for they know the way of Jehovah and the rulings of their God, their Elohim. But these had completely broken the yoke and torn the harness off. This is why the forest lion kills them, why the desert wolf can plunder them, why the leopard guards their cities. All who leave are torn to pieces because their crimes are merely their backsliding because their crimes are, are many, their backsliding keeps increasing. Okay, now it's very important, the, the, the bold uh, part that I put there in verse 3, they refuse correction, refusing to repent. That is always the key to not being chastised. If you don't refuse, if you, if you allow the correction, when Jehovah says, change this and you do it then you might get chastised but it will not be nearly as destructive when you repent and return that's what we call in hebrew teshuva okay so these are two key parts to this whole chapter and to very much to section number one verse number three where it says they refuse correction they refuse to repent. Okay, that's two very big keys to do before the the army is at your doorstep, before the horsemen are at the gate, before the archers are loading up their arrows and, and putting them in their boats. This is something very important because you know we have a, the Book of Revelation. In the Brit Hanashah. Yeshua the Messiah is the one who opens up the seals. For those who believe in a rapture, that is just plain garbage. There is no rapture. You're not getting out of it. The reason this is all happening is because the body of Messiah is doing extraordinarily poorly. They're looking more like the world than they are a holy set apart people. So before this happens, everybody, you want to repent. 
You don't want to refuse correction. You want to repent to Jehovah. Okay. Now let's... Uh, there was an interesting wording that he used. He called... In verse number... Uh, four. My reaction was, these must be the poor and foolish, not knowing the way of Jehovah or the rulings of their God. He calls them foolish. Foolish is, in verse number four, is H2973. Y'all. It's almost like the southern thing, you know, y'all come down there here. So y'all, it means to be foolish, become fools, act foolishly, show wickedness. Something very important for us. Let me see. I'm, I'm blocking it. Let me let me see if I could take myself off the screen so you online can see it. Let me see if I can take those off. Uh, one second here. Let me bring it up here so you can see it now. I see it a little bit better now. If you're online, you can see it a little bit better. To be foolish, foolish, wicked, folly. Okay, it's something for us to really look at. That he, Jehovah calls us foolish. And that's not something you want to be called by, called by the Lord. You don't want to be called foolish. Okay, that's not a compliment. Okay, so he's calling these people foolish because they've refused correction. And now he's bringing on the chastisement. He's he's going to be bringing on what he did not want to do. He, he asked many times through the first four chapters to repent. He gave many opportunities for the people to change. And now they're not, so he's calling them fools. Okay, let's go on to... Let's read verse 4, uh, verse four and 5. My reaction was, these must be the poor, the foolish, not knowing the way of Jehovah, or the rulings of their Elohim. I will go to the prominent men, and I will speak to them. For they know the way of Jehovah and the rulings of their God. But these had completely broken the yoke and torn the harness off. So in some of your translations, instead of the prominent men, it says the great men. And that is H1419, Gadol, meaning large, or great as an adjective, older in age. Number three, in importance. So Jehovah said, okay, these are the unlearned, so let me go to the, the great men, the, the older in age. Because you know, a lot of times when people get older, they get wisdom because they've made their mistakes and they, they know how to change. So he says, I, I went to the, the prominent men, the great men, the, those older. Because sometimes when you talk to younger people, it's... It's like talking to a, a wall. They don't have wisdom. Especially nowadays, they don't have wisdom at all. They're, they know how to play with their phones, but they don't have any wisdom of knowledge of anything. So let's now move to verse 5 and 6. I will go to the prominent men, I will speak to them, for they know the way of Jehovah and the rulings of their Elohim. These had completely broken the yoke and torn the, the harness off. This is why the forest lion kills them, the desert wolf can plunder them, why the leopard guards their cities, all who leave are torn to pieces, because their crimes are many, their backsliding keep increasing. So in verse number five, these older men who were supposed to be wiser, these uh 
more prominent men were supposed to be wiser. They broke the yoke of Torah totally off. They cast it aside. All restraint is gone. Is that not the world today? So those who don't study the past are doomed to repeat it. And Israel, sadly, if you look at the, the news in Israel today, they've cast off the yoke of, of Torah. They're not living the way God wants them to live. They're not having godly families. They're teaching things that are contradictory to Torah, lifestyles that are contradictory to the Bible. They're doing exactly the same thing that was going on all those thousand years ago. And that's why the Bible is so important. It testifies to the validity of what was going on. So they broke the yoke off altogether. They cast aside all restraint. And it's not just food, it's lifestyle. It's, it's a way of thinking, it's a way of acting. So they, 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 they don't have any morals any longer. God is saying in, in verse 5 and 6, they don't have any morals anymore. So what's he going to do about it? So let now look at verse 6, what he sends. This is why the forest lion kills them, why the desert wolf can plunder them, why the leopard guards their cities, all who leave are torn to pieces, because their crimes are many, their backsliding keeps, keeps increasing. So now he, he sends these three animals, the lion, the wolf, and the leopard. These are very, if these animals are, have not been fed, these are the strongest, most ravenous animals in the scriptures. Okay. So he sends these three, and he says the lion, the forest lion, kills them. Okay. So the first reference to lion is in the blessings of the of the tribes. So a lion crouches and he lies down and he and when you rouse the lion, he's gonna tear you to pieces. So the lion is crouching. You don't know you've torn off the, 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 the harness, the, the morals of Torah. So you walk right out and the lion's gonna it's gonna pounce on you. Then the wolf, we get that from the blessing. The first time the word wolf is used is for the tribe of Benjamin. A ravenous wolf, in the morning he devours the prey, and in the evening divides the spoil. So you got these two animals waiting for you to just step outside your wall. And then finally you have the third animal, the leopard. Look at verse 6 again. This is why the forest lion kills them, why the desert wolf can plunder them, why the leopard guards their cities. All who leave are torn to pieces. So the leopard is waiting outside the city. So when, when you try to escape your captors, the leopard is waiting outside the wall and he's going to tear you, tear you to pieces. You're not going to be able to, ex to escape your captors. And then it says, their crimes are many, their backsliding keeps increasing. Okay, it says crimes in the CJB, in some of your Bibles it says transgressions. It's 86588, the Hebrew word pesha, rebellion. That's transgression or rebellion. He says, these transgressions keep increasing. And keep increasing. Is that not like our society today? It's exactly like what our society is today. All right, that wraps up our study for today. Any questions or comments before we close in prayer? All right, let's close in prayer. 
Thank you, Lord, for your blessings today. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to share these truths. May we hear your voice as we sleep tonight in our dreams and let us repent and return to your ways. In this month, the sixth month is about man. Let us return to your will and your ways. In your name is Yeshua, and everybody said, Amen. Shalom. This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to The Remnant's Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, bethgoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M dot org. And click on the donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnant's Call. If you have not taken your first steps to be born again, just ask God's help. Remember, it's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us, and He's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let Him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait any longer. Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles, living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture, truly the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend the day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures, searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our King's Word. We close this Shabbat together with a reading of the New Week's Parashah. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, many of us just can't get enough. So the members 
bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and biblical holy day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, Yeshua. Shalom.